What is up everybody? It is Cody here and I am so excited for several reasons. Number one, I just completed the Appalachian Trail a little over a week ago and I've been home working on my resume, looking for a new job, trying to get my life figured out and it's been really stressful and I'm just now coming back on trail. I'm here at Wildcat Hollow in Ohio, my very first backpacking trail ever and it is great to be under the trees again and out in nature. This is definitely my happy place. The second reason I'm happy is this is my first YouTube video I've ever created. I've been thinking a lot at home about how I can stay connected with the trail. And I think that this YouTube channel is gonna help me kind of reminisce on my trail memories about the things I've learned and to stay connected with you guys. So I thought my first video could be a post-trail gear video just about the stuff I took on the Appalachian Trail, if it lasted me or not, which most of it did, which is pretty awesome. And so I have all of the gear I took with me from Springer Mountain, Georgia to Mount Katahdin in Maine, right here with me. And I'm gonna take it on this trail and just use it like I did on the Appalachian Trail. And hopefully that'll give you guys a better understanding of my setup and how it worked for me on my through hike. So I literally got on trail like 10 minutes ago. Haven't even hiked a mile yet and I found this beautiful stealth spot along the trail here. It has these towering white pine trees above it. It has a very soft pine needle floor here with a little fire ring, some logs to sit on. So I'm gonna call this home for today. So one of the first things I always did when I got to camp was set up my tent. I have the Z-Pax duplex tent and I always stored it in the mesh front of my pack here. I would then grab my tent stakes out of the front compartment of my pack, as well as my trekking poles, which served as stabilization during the day and tent poles at night. So I stored my tent in this stuff sack that I got from Outdoor Research. I originally started the trail with the stuff sack that Z-Packs provided with the tent, but it was so thin that it wore down and got several holes. So I got something more tough and durable for my tent and I felt a lot better storing it in here. So, let's set this bad boy up. Check out this pitch. I'm so proud of that. So now that I have my duplex set up, I would normally reach down into my pack and grab my Thermarest Neo Air X-Lite sleeping pad and blow it up if I had some wind left in me after the full day of hiking. I got the X wide version of the sleeping pad because I toss and turn a lot and needed lots of room to just be comfortable. Next, I would grab my sleeping bag here, which I normally kept at the bottom of my pack liner inside my pack. And I'm just gonna throw this on my sleeping pad real quick. Now I always kept my sleeping bag in this Z pack stuff sack. It just gave it extra protection from rain and moisture. For my sleeping bag, I got the Kelty Mummy Treated Down Bag. I got it because number one, it was affordable. Number two, the down was treated, which made me feel a lot better about crawling into it slightly damp at the end of the day. Walking to the water source here. It's pretty common on the AT for the water source to be kind of a walk. All right, so this is my water system for the AT. I have the Sawyer Squeeze, that's the normal size, and it came with that bladder. And then I also carried a smart water bottle as well. And the system was very simplistic, and I love that about it, and lasted me the whole AT. So my camp chores are coming along great here. I got my firewood drying in the sun. I have my tent set up. I have water for dinner and I kind of want to slip into some comfortable clothes. But before I do that, I want to show you guys my hiking clothes that I used on the AT. So when shopping for hiking clothes, I always wanted to make sure that they were breathable, that they were moisture wicking and lightweight. So let's get started with my t-shirt here. I got this t-shirt at Goodwill. This is a polyester t-shirt. It was very cool and it was the perfect thickness for my back especially because my pack would rub against it throughout the day. And I feel like if it weren't for this shirt, I would have lots of irritation. So love this guy. 
So I also hiked in this button down made by Prana, I believe is how you pronounce it. And I got this shirt about halfway through the trip because I wanted more ventilation for the hot and humid climates. I also had a bandana, which I wore a lot, as well as another bandana on my pack for sweat and eh, sometimes not. For my shorts, I wore these bay leaf running shorts on top. I love these guys because they were polyester, they were quick drying, they basically weigh nothing, and they also had a built-in underwear piece, which was fantastic for town. Underneath these guys, I wore these Silk World tights that I got on Amazon, and these were amazing because number one, they had this little pocket piece, which I store my phone in, my wallet in, all that kind of stuff. And then two, they were very cool and close to my skin. And because of that, they prevented chafing. Um, I didn't chafe nearly as much as I thought I would on the Appalachian Trail because of these guys. Now I did go through three pairs of these on the AT, but they weren't that expensive at all and were totally worth the investment. All right, so I just split all of that firewood and my feet are kind of sick of being in my trail runners. So I'm about to pull my camp shoes out of the front part of my bag here. And I loved these camp shoes that I picked out for the AT. These are made by a company called Emoji, Emoji, I believe. <laughs> and they are actually lighter than Crocs. <laughs> and they're cheaper too. These were only like 20 bucks. So I use these in town. I use these um, while I was at camp. And I also use them to ford rivers. And these things held up like champs. I loved them. All right, we're gonna check out the shoe and sock situation here. And as you can see, there's a lot going on, but I'm gonna break it down for you guys. Um, starting with the shoes. So these are the Lone Peak Ultra Trail Runners. These are 5.0s. I ended the trail in these, but I also had another three pairs of 4.5s that I hiked with the rest of the trail. And both shoes did phenomenal. I didn't really notice a difference between either one. They were fantastic. So we'll take those off real quick. Underneath my trail runners, I have these darn tough socks. These are wool and they were moisture wicking and amazing. I had two pairs, one for hiking and one for sleeping. Take these dudes off. And then underneath these guys are my Njinji liners. And I actually didn't start the trail with these. I was getting horrible blisters. My feet looked God awful and they were getting infected. The blisters were just getting bigger every day. And my hiking partner, Taylor, told me that I should try in Gingy liners. And so I got these at mile 300-ish, I believe, and kept them the rest of the trail. They stopped the blisters, the blisters went away. And yeah, I'll never hike without these guys again. Underneath the liners, we have shin sleeves. Yep, I got shin splints really bad, y'all. In Pennsylvania, the rocks suck. And yeah, gave me shin splints. So these sleeves worked amazing for me. They helped my shins recover very quickly. Um, I actually kept them on the rest of the trail though, because every time I took them off, I felt discomfort again. So wore these shin sleeves pretty much the whole trail and loved them. Even wearing them today on this little like two mile hike. <laughs> and finally, I have my gaiters here. These just kind of strapped onto my trail runners and prevented debris from getting down in there. And they worked great. It looks so awful on camera. So for my rain gear, I got this frog dog set. And listen, I took this top all the way to Katahdin. It lasted from Springer to Katahdin. Now, has it seen better days? Absolutely. It's a little taped up in some spots. The sleeves kind of busted there. But you know, once it warmed up, I didn't really even care about having a top. I just kind of kept this as a windbreaker. Um, but yeah, I am so proud of my frog togs top. So haters are gonna hate. These are my pants. They have a little bit of tape there on the butt. I actually got rid of these halfway through because they were just too hot for the summer. But yeah, this is my rain set and I love it. This is my sleep outfit and I would totally put it on for you guys, but it's currently 90 degrees outside and I do not feel like wearing wool. So we're gonna start with the socks over here. These are darn tough socks, and I used them for sleeping pretty much February through March. And as soon as it warmed up, I got rid of them. This is my minus 33 degree wool top. It's merino wool, and it was so warm and 
moisture wicking and I never got rid of it. Absolutely love that top. And then these are some tights I got at Walmart. They are a polyester blend made by Russell. And yeah, they were super lightweight, breathable, and I slept in them pretty much every night. All right, so here's some of my cold weather clothes here. Some of it I kept for the entire AT. Some of it I got rid of as the seasons changed. But we'll get started with this poofy jacket here. This is made by a company called Roca and Rolla. It is legit down. It is lightweight, it's comfortable, and a pretty awesome poofy jacket. Would totally use it again. This is my fleece. I got it at TJ Maxx, believe it or not, for like 10 bucks. And it's made by a company called Avalanche. And it was a game changer. Very warm, very comfortable. This is my minus 33 degree wool beanie that I got on Amazon. It was also amazing in the winter months and kept me very warm. These gloves are made by Mountain Made. And as you can see, they have a grippable uh, palm there, which were great for grasping my tracking poles throughout the day. And they also kept me warm and dried fairly quickly. All right, so we just went over my clothes. So I thought I'd show you guys my clothes bag. This is made by z -Packs, and it actually has two functions. Number one, it stores my clothes. And then number two, I can flip it inside out and it has this fleece kind of fabric on the inside. I can stuff my poofy jacket and my fleece in there and voila, I have a very soft pillow to sleep on. The sun is going down, which means it's supper time, y'all. So I'll be pulling out my food bag and my kitchen set to show to you guys. So for my food bag, I picked the Z-Pax bear bag. I believe this is the large version here. Um, it was probably one of the most common bear bags I saw on trail because it was really spacious, lightweight, and super durable. And because it was so common, I actually put a little piece of fabric on here with my initials just so that I could differentiate it between the other bags in the bear boxes and in the trees. I always kept my paracord here in my food bag and yeah let's hang this dude up. So I started the trail off with a rock bag and that broke right off the bat so I ended up using sticks and rocks to get my paracord up over limbs and that worked perfectly the rest of the trail. I think after doing the whole Appalachian Trail, I have this down by now. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, no. Fuck you. Why? Yes! Woo! Alright, we are going to check out the kitchen situation here. So I kept all of these tiny pieces of gear in this dry bag. And I got this dry bag on Amazon and it just kept everything super organized. I always kept my fuel canister in the dry bag with everything else. This is my BRS titanium stove that I got on Amazon. It only weighs one ounce and it held up great on the AT. This is my spork. It's a Snow Peak spork, it's titanium as well. It was $10 on Amazon. I could have used a longer handle, but uh, I adjusted to this one and it worked out just fine. So I also have this Tokes Titanium 375 milliliter mug. And I got it because I believe my coffee deserves its own cup and I have no regrets there. This is my Tokes Titanium 650 milliliter pot. This is my main cooking pot. I love this pot because it had a drainage kind of system there at the top. It had nice handles that were just metal and allowed me to cook over fires with it. And it was just lightweight and fit everything perfectly. This is my cozy. It's definitely seen better, better days for sure. I made it out of Reflectix material that I got at Home Depot and had to repair it a few times with this duct tape, uh, but it did help me save on fuel costs and weighed basically nothing.
All right, so we are going to go over the doodad bag. And this thing just carried a bunch of random stuff, like electronics, medicine, first aid, hygiene stuff, you name it. So I got this bag on Amazon. It's just a little sill nylon dry sack and I stored everything in here. We have our first item here, a fire kit. Cotton balls dipped in Vaseline made fantastic lightweight fire starters. So for electronics here, I have the Anchor PowerCore Slim 10,000. This thing was great. I got about three-ish charges out of it, um, and it charged up really quickly when I was in town. It was lightweight-ish, and uh, yeah, it was a great power bank, and I used it all the time. With the power bank came a cord. Obviously took that to charge it with. I took a cord for my phone. This came with the phone, it's just an iPhone cord. I have a double wall charger that I got on Amazon. And this was super helpful when the outlets were busy in hostels and other hiker friendly areas. I have the black diamond spot headlamp. And this thing did require batteries and the batteries died more often than I thought they would. Uh, but when the batteries were fresh, it was very bright and a great headlamp. I would totally use it again. All right. Moving on to, let's move on to medicine, first aid -y kind of stuff. We got Tylenol. I use this more often than what I thought I would. I got lots of, I think, kind of stress-related headaches, pollen-related headaches, but yeah, bring Tylenol. I also have huh, some anti-diarrheal medication, and I did use this stuff. I'm not gonna tell the story because it's kind of grotesque, but yeah, make sure you bring some diarrheal anti medication we have a plethora of band-aids and when i first got blisters i use these all the time to cover up those blisters i also brought alcohol swabs i use these to clean my blisters with yep those came in very handy all right let's move on to kind of like hygiene and self-care stuff i have lip balm or chapstick it's called chapstick. I have um, these fingernail trimmers and I have these tweezers and I used all of these things pretty much weekly on the AT. Toothbrush and toothpaste. It was so cute. My younger brother, uh, when I got home from the AT, asked me if I even brushed my teeth at all on the Appalachian Trail. And I was like, yes, yes I did. I got some backup stuff here. I have these little O-rings, I guess you can call them. And they come with the Sawyer Squeeze. I've lost these before on trips, and if you lose one of these, your Sawyer will not work normally. And so I brought plenty of extras. I brought some extra lids here. This is a Sawyer lid. This is a smart water bottle lid. Um, and I just brought these just in case I lost the ones I already had. I have a little repair kit here. I have some floss. I have some tape. I have some patches for my sleeping pad. And yeah, I never used this. I'm glad I didn't use it, but yeah, brought it just in case. And then I have some z packs tape that i bought for my tent behind me just in case it got a hole and yeah i'm pretty sure that's it for the doodad bag all right now that i have camp set up and all the internal items are out of my pack i thought i would show you my pack so this is the hyperlight mountain gear 3400 wind rider and it was probably my favorite piece of gear on the entire at i love this pack because it is so simple what's the little bee there that's so cute. I love this pack because it was so simplistic. It had a very large front mesh pocket where I stored my tent and my shoes in. I had my rain gear on the other side. I stored my Sawyer squeeze and my sit pad on the other. And I had a plethora of things in my hip belt pockets and on my straps, as you can see. And it rode so well. It was always comfortable. It has a very large, simplistic internal compartment here kind of unrolls as you can see like that and I always had plenty of room this pack was honestly almost a little bit too big for me it's a 55 liter but uh I just I love this thing so this pack is made out of Dyneema which means it is waterproof and does not require a rain cover so it did every now and then soak through a little bit um, I think all Dyneema does. I never had like my sleeping bag get super wet or anything like that. It was normally just like moisture down at the bottom. So I always kept my TP and my hand sanitizer in my left hip belt pocket. And yeah, it was always very accessible and close by just in case I had an emergency. 
All right, and since I just dug into the left hip belt pocket, I thought I would also dig into the right one and also show you guys some random stuff on the outside of my pack. So it looks like I have a cork massage ball made by Rawology, and this thing saved my foot so many times. I use this for not only my feet, but for other leg muscles and even back muscles, and it was incredible. I have some Ben's Bug Spray. I got this in Maine. I'll probably keep this little bottle for forever. And got some Body Glide. And I didn't use it that often, but there were some extreme days where I needed it really bad and it came in very handy. Gold Bond or Baby Powder. Let me tell you, I use that stuff every single day. <sighs> Essential. And then sunscreen. Take it with you. You're definitely going to get sunburned a little bit. So as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff on my straps here. I already show you guys my bandana that I use for sweat and snot. And I also had an REI phone case here at the front. Um, and it actually ended up being too small for my phone. So instead I stored my wallet, which is a Granite Gear wallet and my sunglasses, which were very easily accessible and I could pull them out whenever I needed them. So on my left side, I kept a small bottle here. This is a Gatorade bottle in this case. I actually found this case for like 10 bucks on Amazon. And when I was hiking throughout the day, I didn't have to reach back into my pack and grab my bigger water bottle. And it was also very easily accessible. Just pull it out and boom. It is now officially nighttime. <laughs> and I am going to bed. I'll see you all in the morning. <sighs> Good morning. I have all of my gear laying out here because I just tore down camp and I have it separated into two categories. I have my internal items here. These are the items that I wanted to keep dry and they went on the inside of my pack. And these are the external items and I didn't care if they got wet or not. So of course, my trekking poles always stayed on the outside of my pack. My sit pad was waterproof. So it stayed on the outside. I didn't even wear my rain gear that often. So it always stayed on the outside of my pack. My water system also stayed on the outside of my pack. My camp shoes, bug spray, tent stakes, and of course my tent. All of these guys went into the mesh of my backpack. So for my internal items here, I bought this pack liner made by Z-Packs. It's also made out of Dyneema, just like the pack is. And it was just an extra layer of protection. Cause like I said, for some reason, Dyneema seems to have a saturation point. Of course, my sleeping bag went in the pack liner, my clothes, my sleeping pad. I also kept my electronics, my kitchen and my food inside of my pack. All right, so I'm gonna pack my pack here. I'm gonna start by putting the pack liner down into the bag here. Next, I'm gonna put my sleeping bag at the bottom. We're gonna throw in our clothes bag here. Have my sleep pad. And then we're gonna put the electronics on top of all that. All right, so I just rolled down my liner because I'm gonna put my food on the top with my kitchen, just because I like to have both of those items easily accessible throughout the day. Boom, food and kitchen on the top. So we're gonna seal her up and roll her down. All right, now I'm gonna put my tent and my camp shoes in the front mesh compartment here. So I actually sat on my tent to compress it a little bit and make it smaller so it would fit better. Alrighty, next I have my sit pad and my Sawyer. I'm gonna put them in this side pocket. And then I'm gonna squeeze my bladder right behind it. Next, we got our rain gear and it has its own pockets on this side. Shove it. 
and she is packed and ready to hit the trail. All right, I'm headed back to my car, even though I don't really want to. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it gave you a better understanding of my gear and how I use it every day on the AC. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.